This episode of Inside Louisiana Athletics is brought to you by Park Place Surgical Hospital. Hi, I'm Marcel Johnson. Tonight on Inside Louisiana Athletics, both men's and women's basketball sit atop the Sunbelt West Division. Our Darren Walker sits down with head coach Gary Broadhead to discuss women's basketball finally playing at home and sweeping Texas State. And later, men's tennis coach Mark Jeffrey talks about his team's return to the court in a grueling 2021 schedule. But first, men's basketball is up to five straight wins as Director of Basketball Operations Mike Murphy is here to look back at the men's sweep of Texas State and give us an update on Coach Bob Marlin. You're watching Inside Louisiana Athletics. Hello and welcome to Inside Louisiana Athletics. What a weekend in San Marcos for the men's basketball team. They take a pair of close basketball games. Here now to talk about that and a lot more filling in for the head coach once again, uh, Bob Marlin, is the director of operations, Mike Murphy. So you go on the road without Coach Marlin facing a tough, tough team, a team that you guys are getting really familiar with. And you come away with two wins. Uh, you had to be ecstatic with that, with those results. We were really, really happy the way the weekend turned out. Texas State is a very good basketball team. Anytime you play the same team four times within four weeks, you pretty much know what, what you're going to do and what you're going to see and how things are going to work out in terms of offense and defense. But our guys played really tough, and they ground out a really hard weekend to get two wins on the road. Mm -hmm because the upcoming schedule isn't kind. Our next five of eight are on the road, so it's nice to start this road swing with two really big wins. Right, they don't get, the weekends don't get uh, much bigger than that. Friday night, you win at 62 to 60. Duguay showed up big in this one. You didn't have him uh, the first two times you played him back in uh, early January, but he was phenomenal. He gets you 11 points, 10 rebounds, really effective on the defensive end as well, and then he was making some key free throws down the stretch. He was. As you said, Dude did not play in this series early in January. He was out. But he's a double-double guy, and he can really cause havoc on the defensive end of the, of, of the floor, and he can guard anybody. So Friday night, he came up big with us with 11 points and 10 rebounds, and he was a major factor in us winning the basketball game, as was you know, a lot of guys. Anytime a game is this close, um, you know, it takes a team effort, but, but it was nice to have Dew back on the floor because he is a presence rebounding the basketball as well as defensively. Another guy who's really stepped his game up lately is Cedric Russell. He's the Sunbelt Player of the Week. He is just in a groove now, to put it simply, but he uh, led scoring with 21 points, 13 in the second half, and he too hit some huge free throws with less than a minute to go to seal the win. He did. Uh, Cedric was solid all weekend. He was very consistent. I thought his shot selection was spot on, and the results were, were him getting 24 and 21 points and shooting a very high percentage. As you said, it led to being honored as the Sunbelt Conference Player of the Week, an honor well-deserved. But, but Cedric likes playing in San Marcos, and, and we like it when he plays well because he can be a real difference maker from behind the three-point line because of his consistency and his ability to get off shots under pressure. One other thing that I like about his game was Late, and these things don't show up in stat lines, but late in the game, he was showing great patience, using some clock, doing the little things that help you get the win. Right, and he should. He's a senior, mm -hmm. and he's been around for a long time. He's played a lot of basketball, and we like him having the ball in his hands at the end of the game. Now, having said that, the other team knows that too. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be very efficient with what you want to do offensively. He was disciplined, as you said, and he's very effective, and he's one of the reasons we came out with a big win on Saturday. Game two, another tight battle between the two teams that, as we said earlier, are just really getting to know each other well. Devin Butts was the hero in this one, and we'll get to the game winner in a little bit, but uh, you don't get to that point in the game without his performance throughout the game. He had uh, 18 points. He was four for five from three-point range, really kind of finding his stroke again. He is. Uh, Devin It can be a very ex uh, explosive offensive player. He has the ability to shoot the three ball. He can also shoot that mid-range shot. He's very athletic. And if you'll remember the first time we played Texas State in the first game here in Lafayette, he was 6 for 12 from the three-point line. So he has that potential to be an explosive player from behind a three-point arc. Another player I want to mention is Isaiah Richards. 
Isaiah was two for three on Saturday, did a really good job defensively, did a good job rebounding, and was very efficient with his offense at the basket, giving Theo Akuba some rest when Theo got in foul trouble. So both of those guys, 24 bench points, is going to help you win a lot of basketball games. But the load of those, 18, came from Devin. Cedric, uh, you mentioned a little while ago, also had 24. He had six three-pointers. Him and Mason Harrell just seemed to bring out the best in each other. They were going toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe that day. <laughs> they, they really do. Both are very competitive. Uh, both are very good players. Both have a very specific skills, skill set. And um, I'm sure if we see them again, you'll see that one-on-one -on -one matchup again. Because let's not forget, Harold took the charge at the very end of, the, uh, of, of our last possession mm -hmm. against Cedric. And um, both of those guys are, are hard-nosed. They, they both know how to play the game. They know how to play the game the right way. But, um, man, our guy, Cedric Russell, for a senior, to, to go into a series like this, with as much on the line as it is, basically we're a little past the halfway point, and it was for first place in the West Division. And as it turned out now, we're in first place throughout the entire conference because of our winning percentage. But to have Cedric come up this big on the road really says something about his efficiency, his discipline, and his maturity as a senior, as you would expect on a basketball team, from a player who a lot is expected from. And the other team knows it. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to perform at a high level, especially when the other team knows it. No doubt. So let's take you guys to the last five seconds of this one. As you said, Cedric with the jumper with 3.4 seconds to go. It turns out to be a charge. You know, was it or wasn't it? The referee said it was. But uh, And then the Bobcats uh, obviously get the ball. They're trying to inbound. The ball goes through Caleb Asbury's hands. And Devin is there for the steal. And he puts it in with four-tenths of a second. What a finish to a phenomenal basketball game. Just talk about the locker room, what was that like after? Well, the locker room was pretty excited. And, and as coaches, we always talk about every possession matters, whether it's the first possession or the last possession. And in this game, that was very true. Uh, Asbury checked before he caught, caught the ball to see where the defender was. He took his eye off the ball for a brief second, and that allowed uh, Devin to steal the basketball game, to steal, to steal the basketball ball and the game for that matter <laughs> and um, as he went to shoot it I'm not entirely sure that ball didn't get tipped a little bit because it looked like when he let it go the, the trajectory got a little bit higher off the board because they had a great contest from I believe Isaiah Small and um, boy what a heads up play by Devin you know the only thing I could think of is Johnny Most in the old Boston Celtics where, where Most would say Havlicek stole the ball or Bird stole the ball and, and that's the first thing that immediately came to my mind as well as let's make sure we defend the .4 seconds left in the game. But every possession matters. You play until the final whistle. We did that and came away with a very, very big win. Wins number 200 and 201 for, or at Louisiana for Coach Marlin. Let's talk about him a little bit. I mean, it had to be uh, gut-wrenching not to be there, but I just picture him jumping up and down in his living room watching this go down. Uh, what was his reaction, and how's he doing uh, physically? He's doing well. He was super, super excited after the basketball game. Listen, he communicated with the staff and the players throughout the week. Even though he wasn't there physically, you know, his handprint was all over our game plan. And we had daily Zoom meetings with coaches, the staff. He met with the players every day as a staff. He met with us in the hotel prior to both games. He met with us after the game as a team. So his handprints were all over this. You know, Coach was the fastest in the Sun Belt Conference to 100 wins. He's now got 202. And I believe in, what, the next two or three games, if we can win, he's going to become the Sun Belt all-time leader in wins. He's had a very long career, a very successful career. And he's been very consistent here at UL. And, um, you know, this is a tough league. There, there's a lot of good players. There's a lot of good coaches. And, and, and we're fortunate to work for someone like Coach. And I think the players feel the same way. They're fortunate to play for someone like Coach because of his consistency. But even though he was out with COVID, right, he has a, a, a uh, process in place mm -hmm. and, and that allows for that to happen. Everybody has a job title. Everybody's assigned specific responsibilities, whether you're a staff member or a player. And his mantra all the time is just do your job. And if you do that, you know, we'll be able to compete at a very efficient and effective level. And the players bought into that. I thought the staff did a great job in, in, in um, running practice and in game planning and in executing the game plan. And like I said, we were in daily communication with Coach. So this was really a team effort to get these two wins against Texas State. Well, congratulations, Coach. And we appreciate your insights uh, filling in for Coach Marlin. The Cajuns are heading to Jonesboro for two this weekend. They will face the Red Wolves on Friday at 6, Saturday at 4. You can catch those games on ESPN+. Plus. The Bobcats will inbound in the backcourt. Cajuns will play for a steal immediately. If not, they have to foul quickly. 
and then a turnover. Inside, butts off the glass, yes! Timeout, Louisiana. A disastrous inbound for Texas State, and Devin Butts takes advantage, and with it, the Cajuns might take first place. Next on Inside Louisiana Athletics, Darren Walker sits down with head coach Gary Broadhead to discuss being back at the Cajun Dome and looking towards playing Arkansas State. <laughs> this has got the steak and the sizzle. The tots on this are just crispy and they're flavorful. This will oh. keep you out of my tots. Sonic Extra Long Ultimate Cheese Steaks. Yeah, this might keep me out of your tots. Come see the good guys and discover the courtesy experience at Courtesy Buick GMC in Lafayette. Get a 2020 Buick GX for $17,988 or a 2021 GMC Acadia for only $26,988 at Courtesy Buick GMC in Lafayette. Courtesy Bruce Art is more than just a dealership, it's an experience. It's one of the largest inventories in Louisiana. And of course, it's always incredible deals. Get a 2020 Chevrolet Equinox for only $19,988 or a 2020 Chevrolet Trax for only $16,988. Louisiana's Raging Cajun women's basketball team takes the sweep of the weekend in Sunbelt Conference play, defeating Texas State 66-64 and 66-60. I'm Dan McDonald, along with my partner Eric Mouton and Eric. Two games that were very similar. Cajun struggled early. They shot the ball very well in the second half in both games. Yeah, they definitely did. And you can attribute a lot of that to the bench. Coach Broadhead may be a little deeper with a few more players coming off the bench. The scoring was really lopsided in Louisiana's favor. And I think legs played a big part in that. Ty Doucet with a couple of big games for Louisiana. 14 points and nine rebounds on Friday. On Saturday, she comes back with 15 points and nine more rebounds. But the big thing on the Saturday, she also had three big block shots, all of them coming in the second half. And one adjustment Coach Broadhead wanted to make was rotating on the weak side on defense to take the bigs away from Texas State. I think they did that tonight, made them kick it out, and, that, and option number two for Texas State didn't work out. Denasia Hood, very impressive for Texas State. She ends up with 18 on Friday, 17 on Saturday. She shows that she's one of the best players in the Sun Belt, but the Cajuns were able to close down that inside game, especially in the Saturday game. Yeah, they shot 60% in the second half the first game, 65 in the second half. That's impressive, and that's also attributed to offensive execution and great passing by Louisiana. A couple of double-figure scores for the Cajuns. Skyler Goodwin with 13 on the Friday game, including the two winning free throws with two and a half seconds left. Brandy Williams with 13, and Meme Hallman with 12 off the bench in the Saturday win. And with that, these two wins, the Cajuns improved to seven and five on the season. More importantly, they are six and one in Sunbelt Conference play, and they remain atop the Sunbelt's West Division. They've won five in a row, all in conference play. Thanks, guys, for that recap. Now here to talk about the weekend sweep is the head coach, Gary Broadhead. So what does it say about your team that probably of the 80 minutes that you played this weekend, 60 of them were not your best basketball, but you still came out with two wins? Yeah, this, you know, that, that we've been kind of preaching about experience, and I think that's what happens. The experience goes a long way. In the past, normally we wouldn't have finished. And, you know, for us to be able to finish as strong as we did, you know, I, I, you got to give a lot of kids – I mean, credit to the kids because of their experience. And, you know, just kind of like it's a 40-minute game. We know it's going to be a long game. Just kind of settle down. And, and I thought they did, you know. They, you, you could tell in the timeouts and coming out the quarters and all that, they, they were connected. And, they, you know, it's like you felt a sense of calmness mm -hmm. uh, that was never all – I mean, we never really had in the, in the prior years. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some of the action from game one. This is a game that you win 66-64. Real contrast in styles uh, throughout this game. They were playing kind of inside. You were playing kind of outside. And I know that's not your preference, but uh, you did get a couple of big performances from players who maybe aren't household names yet. Destiny McAfee playing a bigger role lately. She had eight points in this one, six in the fourth quarter. But 
I think bigger than any stat that she puts up is her energy, her hustle. She just brings that, and it's infectious to the team. You know, and I think that's the great thing about our bench is most of the kids that come off the bench come up. I mean, I call them instant offense, you know, and, but they're really instant energizers, mm -hmm. man. They really come off, and they uh, they bring a lot of energy to the game, and, uh, and, and definitely Destiny is one of those kids. You know, she's a cheerleader. She's always pumping us up, and always trying to get us going. But yeah, she's uh, she can score. She's very athletic. And I thought she did some great things as the stretch, you know, went down and some of the things that we needed to happen. And I think it kind of motivated, it motivated everybody else. Alexandria Goodley with an, uh, was another perimeter player who was huge in this one, nine points. She was three for three from three point range and obviously hit some big shots. It turned out that all of her shots were big in this one. Yeah, no doubt. You know, she had a great week of practice, and I noticed that was one of the things that she was doing because when we recruited her, we recruited her not just as a point guard, but we knew she could shoot the ball. And, it, it, you know, the opportunity really wasn't there as much, and then all of a sudden she has the opportunity, and, and here it was. And you could see that practice, you know, it was getting better. And, I mean, her, for her to be three from three from the three-point line like that, and I think that was a big help for her too because we needed – you know, some we were wasn't shooting it exactly that well, and that that just kind of helped open up the game for Ty mm -hmm. inside. I thought. Speaking of Ty, she was misconsistent for you, uh, game in and game out. She led the way with 14 points, nine rebounds, but also getting it done on the defensive end with five steals. And that last one uh, is what gave you the ball back with seconds left to go ahead and get the win. Yeah, that's what I'm liking about Ty right now is, man, when we get our backs against the wall and whatever, she's, she looks like she's the one that's always stepping up. You know, she's stepping up. Uh, you know, being a little bit more forceful on the offensive side and definitely forceful on the defensive side. So, you know, it's exciting to see that for her and, you know, everybody rallies around her. And I think mm -hmm. that's a big part of us, you know, being better and get continue to get better. You mentioned the word uh, finish, and you certainly did uh, in this one. You hold Texas State scoreless for the last 302. Meanwhile, you're going four for five down the stretch. Uh, Skylar Goodwin gets uh, fouled with two and a half seconds on a tie game knocks down both free, th free throws, and you win it. Yeah, that was big. You know, and I, I, I like the call from the assistant coaches. Coach Hamburg uh, kind of in charge of defense since Deacon was out. And uh, coming out of the uh, timeout with 2.5 left, we switched to a zone, and they really didn't get a shot off. And mm -hmm. I thought that was a good call on that part. But, you know, it's, it's finishing. You know, I thought Skyler was very aggressive on the drive, and she had enough. You know, we only had two fouls uh against them, against Texas State. And so we would have had to take the ball out. So it was for, good for her to recognize that, you know, she needed to try to get the shot off. Now to Ty Doucette's historic weekend. Along the way, she became the 19th player in program history with 1,000 points. And uh, so the PA guys announcing to the crowd and everybody's kind of patting her on the back. But she was having none of it because there was still four minutes left in the game. And it was a, a close game, two-point game. Uh, she was way more focused about getting the win. Yeah, there's no doubt. Ty doesn't like a lot of attention to herself. You know, she's more of a team player and all that. And it, it showed then, you know, because I can remember her face coming, sitting down and like, okay, we finally took the lead, you know, and hey, we got to get this thing done. You know, she was more focused on getting the win than what she had accomplished in her career. Game two, uh, neither team really shooting the ball well early. But again, you get some contributions Hallman with uh, 12 points, and she was your third leading scorer. Tamara Johnson uh, with the best game of her brief Cajun career. Eight points, three rebounds, two steals, and a block. Very productive in just 10 minutes of play. Yeah, that was good to see. You know, it's like uh, I, I had been preaching about the talent that was on the bench and for it to come off the bench and, and really show up in, in a much-needed time. Uh, that was excited for th I was excited for them, but also the team. You know, the team is so into everybody. They want everybody to do well. They want everybody the opportunity to play. So, to have that opportunity, and we talk about that all the time. You know, make the best of your opportunity. Always be prepared for it. And so, I mean, it showed that they were really prepared, and it was good to see that. And also, it helped us to propel us into to playing a lot better basketball. Ty, uh, another great night. Fifteen points, nine rebounds, three blocks, and those blocks got her to over. 100 for her career another milestone yeah i think i'm the only one that stopped her from blocking shots you know it's <laughs> like I'm a, I'm a big believer in taking charges and all that and we spent two years trying to get ty to do that and i was like no okay she, that's what she wants to do and so I don't, she probably would have 200 right now if i wouldn't have uh slowed her down so yeah uh, she we are letting her be herself and mm -hmm. uh she's really good at it so you win game two, 66 to 60. That's six in a row. You're six and one in conference play on top of the Western Division. This week back at home, you'll host 
Arkansas State, a team you have to feel like you just played them <laughs> what, a couple of, a week and a half ago. Uh, and then also you're going to have a makeup game on Monday against UTA. And, you know, you keep winning these games and the games keep getting bigger and bigger as the season goes. No on. doubt. You know, and I think I like that. You know, it's, we're in a position right now that we're in first, but I mean, we could be out of it. You know, uh, it wouldn't take much, you know, and I think every game that we've been playing is the next most important game. And yeah. our kids buy into that. They know how important it is for us to continue to win and to continue to, to try to get better and stuff. So to me, that's the exciting part. When we're preparing, they know all that and, and they, they, they've bought into it. And it's, it's, uh, it's a great feeling for us as coaches and players to know that we have that opportunity. Well, best of luck this weekend. Appreciate the time as always. Those games are Friday at 6, Saturday at 4, and Monday at 4. You can catch them all on ESPN+. Next on Inside Louisiana Athletics, Darren Walker sits down with men's tennis coach Mark Jeffrey and talks about his team's return to the court and a grueling 2021 schedule. Come see the good guys and discover the courtesy experience at Courtesy Buick GMC in Lafayette. Get $12,000 off your choice of a 2020 Buick Envision or a 2021 GMC Sierra 1500 Texas Edition at Courtesy Buick GMC in Lafayette. I mean, we could have. Mm, mm. I know where you're going. Mm. No, we couldn't have. You're right. I was going to say, we could have got one and shared, nah, that but was, that's that not true. Gonna work. Sonic Extra Long Ultimate Cheese Steaks. That, that wouldn't work. See the good guys and discover the courtesy experience at Courtesy Buick GMC in Lafayette. Get a 2020 Buick GX for $17,988 or a 2021 GMC Acadia for only $26,988 at Courtesy Buick GMC in Lafayette. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Athletics. The 2021 portion of the men's tennis schedule is underway here, and it's been a challenging slate so far. Here now to discuss that and a lot more is the head coach, Mark Jeffrey. So uh, before we get to this year, let's go back to last year. You guys were rolling 13 and 3. Uh, everything seemed to be, you know, going your way, and then bam, all of a sudden, everything just came to a screeching halt uh, because of the pandemic. But uh, now that you guys are back on the court, you got to be ecstatic just to be playing again at this time. Yeah, we we had uh, three, uh, four graduating seniors last year, and then, and unfortunately, uh, season was cut short. We're doing well, and uh, it was looking good for the end of this end of the year, but. Uh, but yeah, you know, getting past all of it, we're just we, again thankful to be to be on the court and. Uh, <laughs> We've played one of the toughest schedules in D1 yeah. so far, but uh, but no, we are we are very thankful just to be, just to be out there playing for sure. As always, you have a lot of international players on your team, so talk about how challenging it was for them to deal with that situation. Uh, maybe not knowing if they were going to be able to go home. Maybe if they did go home, not knowing if they were going to be able to come back, and all the the challenges that they faced. Yeah, we uh, we had um, probably um, most of the guys uh, were lucky enough to go back home, and uh, like you said, it was the challenge of being able to be. Um, you know, we were, we were kind of afraid about them going back and how they would do well, you know, how they would do in school, academically, socially. And uh, so there was a lot of concern there. And then as the um, the summer went by, we were very concerned about them coming back on time. And um, certain countries were, were, were being welcome, but not welcome, but they were okay to coming back. Mm -hmm. And then some weren't. So we were lucky enough to have guys that were from countries that were allowed to come back. And and so once we got them all back, then we had to worry about again about the winter as far as Christmas break. So probably 75% of the guys stayed over, over the winter break and then 25% went home. And then we did have some trouble logistically get, getting them back for, for the start of school in January. So it's been, a, it's been a challenge, that's for sure. Yeah, good to have them all back though at this point. But uh, you mentioned the tough early schedule, just to name a few teams that you played already, Texas, Mississippi State, LSU, Middle Tennessee, among others. You still have Arkansas and Oklahoma coming up, Rice and Baylor. Uh, talk about the mindset behind scheduling, uh, a, having a schedule of this magnitude. Well, it, it kind of came together last minute mm -hmm. <laughs> like with COVID and uh, mm -hmm. some of these teams had so many cancellations. So, 
you know, we had all of our Sunbelt slate, home slate was canceled, and we had eight home matches canceled for co from, from COVID. So we, we were looking for, for dates, and, uh, you know, it was the only dates we could really pick up. And so it turned into a, you know, quite, it was a monster schedule as far as challenge. Um, probably, probably a little bit more than what we could chew. But anyway, um, you know, we played uh, Texas starting out. They've just beaten Florida, who, who's favored to win the SEC. Texas today is ranked four in the country. Um, you know, LSU, we had a 4-3, pretty close. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I think um, so, you know, uh, some of those teams are some of the best in the nation. So we, hopefully, you know, this coming Tuesday, we'll have a ranked team for the first time in a long time. Kara Medchev and uh, Dorak, they beat the number one team from Texas and also beat the number one team from Middle Tennessee who, who beaten uh, Mississippi State's top team, who was top 25 in the country. So that should happen on Tuesday. So that, those are some good things that have happened. But unfortunately for us, you know, we, we kind of got banged up from that a little bit too. And so we kind of went into last weekend a couple of men down and that's kind of hurt us a little bit too. But in the end, I think that the body of work, it will help us playing these teams as we get ready for Sunbelt play, I mean, conference in, in April. All right, that was going to be my next question was, you know, getting that, uh, ha having that tough slate and how it got you ready uh, down the road. Um, let's finish with a personal subject, Mississippi State. You played the Bulldogs in Starkville, a place that you're very familiar with. You played there collegiately, still hold a lot of records over there. So yeah. what was that like for you to yeah. take a team back there? I appreciate that. Uh, it, was, it was nice because a lot of the same people that still work there. <laughs> uh, John Cade, he's, he's always really nice to me and uh, John is now assistant athletic director there now. They've got a brand new $9 million indoor facility, um, which, you know, they were showing me around and, and uh, you know, they, they were very nice in, in letting me know that, hey, you're one of the guys that helped build this and, and very proud of where that program has come. Matt Roberts does an amazing job with the team. They're always in the top three or four in the SEC. He recruits really, really well. So that program, the administration, they really, really care about tennis. They put a lot of money into tennis and, uh, it's just great to see that, that you know, I played there. I hadn't been ranked in a long, long time when I got there, and then we were lucky enough to get the team in the top 25 and just get it going. I mean, you know, and then there, from there, they've had a lot of success uh, since then, you know, for the past uh, 20, 20, 30 years, which is, which is really, really nice to see for them, you know. All right, Coach, we appreciate the time. Glad you got to go back to your old stomping grounds and enjoy that. Thank you again. Those home matches coming up for the Raging Cajuns on Friday, February 12th, and then a doubleheader on Sunday, March 21st. Get out to Cajun Courts and check them out. All you have to do is you, dish a drink, and your taste buds. Sounds like happiness. So many feels. All the feels. You do the shimmy when it meets expectations, and the head nod is I'm perfectly satisfied. Sonic Ultimate Drink Stop. Courtesy Bruce Art is more than just a dealership, it's an experience. It's fast and reliable service. And it's always incredible deals. Get 11,000 off on a 2020 Chevy Silverado 1500 Crew Cab. Or get a 2021 Chevrolet Silverado 1500 for only $29,988. To perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. I feel like I would go with the signature strawberry limeade, add in cranberry. It'll give you that kick like right there in the back. Sonic Ultimate Drink Stop. This muscle right here. It might be a little tart for me. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Inside Louisiana Athletics. Be sure to catch us next week for more Louisiana Raging Cajuns coverage. Go Cajuns.